Hi, welcome to Craft Little Things, I'm Andrea um, and today I'm going to show you how to make one of these really gorgeous concertina boxes that hold cards. Now I'll be honest with you, this one, um, I've made a mistake cutting out my pieces so I'm going to make this one slightly smaller. Um, this one, it was going to be exactly the same as this. This is 7 inches by 3 inches deep by 4.5 inches high so it comfortably holds um, four by six cards and envelopes um, so this is the size you really want if you want to hold four by six cards and envelopes this is a Christmas one <clears throat> and I was going to make it to hold the same but unfortunately I made a little bit of a mistake and I've only measured my height as four so rather than go back and waste all this DSP and waste all this cardstock I'm going to go with the four by seven by three uh, version um, and I'll use it to hold smaller cards or I'll use it to hold die cuts or whatever. I'm also going to show you how to use the little popper tool on paper um, or cardstock so let's get cracking. I don't know it might it might just hold um, the cards I don't know. Now you might want to use a thicker card so you might want to use extra thick white or extra thick very vanilla for this but it does it does hold itself quite nicely and obviously the more you know it, it exp I mean look it's really sturdy and the more um, cards you put in it obviously the stronger it's going to be and it's not meant to be carried around I mean you could put a handle on it if you wanted it's not meant to be carried around it's meant to be um, on a desk with these little dividers that say um, you know thank you birthday whatever Christmas whatever okay so, um, we'll I'm using a DSP from last autumn winter. Um, you can get the, the entire cover out of one sheet of DSP, even if you get your measurements right. Um, I'm pretty sure, I have, I've got a, a chunk left, but um, I'm pretty sure you can still get it out of one sheet. I'm pretty sure you can. So, you will need that. Um, and I'm using this Cherry Cobbler cardstock. Uh, 12 by 12 cherry top cherry cobbler uh, this was on the clearance rack um, last time it was updated which seems like forever ago um, in 12 by 12 and I think I got it for three pound or something this was also on the clearance rack cherry cobbler um, ribbon um, which I got last I think it was last Christmas I got that and then I've used stitched stitch <laughs> then I've used stitched shape framelits to make my um, little label for the front of the box and I've used garden green I think that's garden green there as well I've used garden green just to, to stamp celebrate from the amazing new stamp set um, and then I'm going to run you through all these these pieces of cardstock now wherever I say four, four inches if you want to make the bigger one read four and a half inches okay and I will make another one um, with the four and a half inches if you need me right to. so first of all your first piece of cardstock needs to measure seven inches by eleven inches now if you were doing the four and a half deep one this would need to measure twelve inches okay so this is twenty eight centimeters by seventeen point eight centimeters for the four and a half one you'd need thirty point four centimeters by 17.8 centimeters okay they're made in exactly the same way and I will tell you if you want to make the four and a half one I will tell you right the way through where you'd score and where you'd fold and things like that so that you can do that then you need a piece of cardstock that measures six by seven and that would be the same no matter which one you're making okay so that measures 15.2 centimeters by 17.8 centimeters then you need two pieces of cardstock which measure four by five. Now the one I made there had six concertinas on and it just felt a few too many so I've, it was a six inch um, piece so I've just cut it down to five but if you still want that size that I've made there then you want these pieces to be four and a half by six but I've made them four by five okay. So um, 4 by 5 is 10.2 by 12.7 and if you wanted to make the bigger version, if you wanted to stick with the, the 5 for the concertinas, then you'd need 4.5 by 5, so that's 11.4 uh, by 12.7 and if you wanted to make 
just exact same ones that I've made there, then you'd need six by four and a half, which is 15.2 by 10.2 centimeters, okay? Then you'll need That must just be a bit of extra cardstock, so I don't know what that's for. <laughs> then you'll need two strips that measure one and a half by seven inches. Now, it doesn't matter how big you're making your box, these will be fine, okay? So one and a half by seven inches. No. If you're making the four and... Right, so then you need... Then you need four strips here, which all measure one and a half. Two measure one and a half by seven inches, and two measure one and a half by five inches. So that's um, 3.8 centimetres by 12.7, uh, and 3.8 centimetres by 17.8. Now, if you're making the four and a half inch box, you would need these to be half an inch longer. So you'd need them to be seven and a half inches, which is 19 centimetres, and you'd need this one to be five and a half, which is 14 centimetres. Okay, so that's that. Your ribbon and your sentiment. I use the large oval stitch shape framelit and the and some uh, cherry cobbler. And I used white, whisper white, with the celebrate printed on there with the next shape down. Right then. So now for the top of your box, uh, for the sides of your box, you need two panels. Now I've cut mine a quarter of an inch smaller than the um, cardstock's going to be. Um, on the one I did there, that was only an eighth of an inch. Um, but I thought I'm going to have more of the outside showing on this one because it's quite white so I wanted to bring in more of the red so this measures three and three quarters by six and three quarters now again if you're making a four and a half inch deep one then this needs to measure four and a quarter so but it still needs to measure six and three quarters along this side so 17.2 centimeters by um 12 um 9.5 centimeters but if you're making a four and a half deep one, then you, this needs to measure 10.8 centimetres, okay? And you need two of those and make them both bigger. Then this piece um, will be the same whichever one you make. So this one is six and three quarter inches by two and three quarter inches because this is to go across the top, so your top's not going to change. So six and three quarter inches is 17.2 and two and three quarter inches is seven centimetres. And then this piece is to go across the front of your box. Now this piece, again, this piece won't change no matter, no matter what you do. So six and three quarters by one and three quarters. So um, 17.2 by 4.5. And then you need four strips of DSP, one and a quarter by six and three quarters. Need two of those. That one looks a bit bigger than that one. One and a quarter by six and three quarters, which is 3.2 centimetres by 17.2 centimetres. But again, if you're going to do the four and a half inch version, had an, a half an inch on, so you'd make those seven and a quarter. So that's 18.4. And then these two are um, an inch and a quarter by four and three quarters, which is 3.2 by 12.1. But again, if you were making the four and a half inch box, you'd make those five and a quarter long which is 13.3. Um, so now we get on to scoring. Scoring is very simple. Leave your DSP, it doesn't need to be scored. Your ribbon and your sentiment can go to one side. You don't need those yet. Just put my DSP there. Um, everything else needs scoring. Now I'm going to have to try and remember the scoring measurements now for if you're making the four and a half one so 
So for the four one then, you'd score at four and seven, which is um, 10.2 centimetres and 17.8. For the four and a half one, you'd score at four and a half, which is 11.4, and seven and a half, which is 19. Okay, so it's not that difficult. Um, this top piece, you'd score at one inch and four inches. And again, you'd do that no matter which piece you were making, which size you were making. So two and a half centimetres and 10.2 centimetres. Okay. Now your thin strips, they're going to be scored at one inch Oops. Three inches and six inches because they're going to come over the top of your box, so they're going to come from the back, across the top, down the two inch front and then overlap, okay? So that's, and they're going, that's gonna happen, hang on a minute, I'll tell you what the th four and a half inch is. So that's one inch, which is 2.5, four inches, which is 10.2, and six, six inches, which is 15.2 centimeters. Now if you're doing the um, other box, then these will be the same. Yeah, these two will be the same, you don't have to make these bigger. Sorry, I'm trying to sort of think as I go along. And then these are going to come up from the bottom, so these would need to be a little bit bigger because you need an inch where they're going to overlap. So imagine that's coming over the top of the box. This is going to overlap to press them together. So then you've got two, three, and then you've got another inch. But on the um, so on the four and a half inch box, you'd score at one inch, and then you'd score at two and a half. Okay, but on these you score at two, and then that three inches goes underneath. On the others, they'd be a little bit bigger, and so you'd score at one, two and a half, okay, to get down to the bottom of your box, and then you'd have the three inches that went underneath. You could have two inches that went underneath if you wanted, it doesn't really matter. So by doing that, you've got two, three, four inches for the front of your box, and if you're going to do um, the bigger box, then obviously this score line will be down here at two and a half and that will just fold underneath your box okay so I hope that's clear so um, again just for this this is 2.5 centimeters and five centimeters and if you were doing the four and a half inch box that would be 6.4 centimeters if it's not clear then um, you know just say so and I will do do it again and I'll make the four and a half inch size I'll probably do it again anyway now these pieces, um, it doesn't matter what size you've got them, these are for the 4 inch box, so that's obviously the depth of the box, so we want to be scoring on the long side and we want to just be scoring every half an inch. Now if you want to make the deeper concertina um, or, the, or a shallower concertina, that's up to you, just make sure you've got your height right, so either you're going to have it at 4 or 4.5 by whatever the other measurement is okay so every half an inch so that's every 1.3 centimeters okay. my scoring tool's gone my score's gone right off right so that's that so hopefully that was clear and you understood that <laughs> and I mean I could have just not bothered and 
just given you just carried on with the four by seven box but I just wanted to cover both sizes there's some little kids playing outside my house in the street and I'm not kidding you one of them is probably three and the other is probably four and there's not a single person watching them apart from me <sighs> right <laughs> now for the DSP things like that just annoy me doesn't hurt just to watch your kids does it or take them out um right there's a lovely there's a massive park just literally around the corner there's a beach across the road and there they are playing in the street with nobody watching them anyway um right so your dsp then i ran through the size of the, i did the size of the dsp didn't i <laughs> so i'm probably losing my mind right so we're going to do some scoring so concertina in then the first one fold over so you've got a mountain and then a valley as we say in the old uh, paper crafting world so you're just going to concertina it or fan it or whatever you call it just make sure you press those folds down really nice and strong oh i'm making african uh, west african food today and the smell of it oh it's gorgeous it's making my mouth water. I don't think I'm going to have to be able to wait till dinner time. I might have to have it for my lunch. Absolutely love West African food. I think it's such a shame when I watch vlogs and stuff of people going to like Nigeria and Ghana and stuff and they're eating in like Burger King and you think oh what a shame when I was a young girl and I had lots of friends with Nigerian and Sierra Leone and all over the place um I they would never have gone home and eaten that stuff never in a million years they used to love going home to eat you know proper food like because what we get imported here in terms of their sort of vegetables and things like that is nowhere near obviously like what they get and, and the the taste of what they grow is so much better over there so they'd be desperate to get home and to have something delicious you know and to think if I'd have said to some of my friends oh but you can't wait to get back to Lagos to have some KFC then I thought I'd lost my mind but how time's changing. So I'm just going to burnish these um, score lines. And when we add the DSP, I'll burnish them again. I just thought there's no point in burnishing DSP and the cardstock. I and mean, if you want this to be sort of, you know, an even better fit, you can always extend your score lines to another sort of sixteenth of an inch or something. This piece here, this is going to go around the back and then this is going to come down the front so you want it to fold like so, so in on themselves. So it's folded like that. And then this piece the same. And again, whichever size you're making. I mean, you can make it smaller than this. You can make it for a three by three if you want. Whichever size you're making, this is what you do. Okay. Now I am just going to grab a corner rounder. I'm just going to take this one. And I'm not going to corner around those. But I am going to corner around these ones so I'm going to just punch just to make those look a little bit nicer and with these this one where I've got my one inch I'm just going to notch that in oops I've got some cardstock on some paper 
so I'm just going to notch that in so it just looks nicer on the, when, when the back's done. Um, and then these, I'm just going to corner punch those on both ends. This is just a little woodware corner punch. It's beautiful. I love it. And even though Stampin' Up! now have a corner punch, I still love my woodware one, so I'm still using it. Because it's just it's just a lovely little delicate edge that it gives. And it's so much easier to use than those triangular things. Not a big fan of those, to be honest. Oh, I'm going to have to have some of that food. <laughs> oh, I just have to have a little sampler. Just have to taste it to make sure it's right. And there we go. So I'm just going to... Now, what I'm going to do as well is, because I've rounded all those off, I'm going to do the same on these. So on this piece that's going, sorry, this piece that's going on the front, I'm just going to corner around the two bottom corners. Think of your direction of your DSP, obviously that's going to go like that. Oh sorry, my throat's making noises because I've been drinking gallons of juice. I don't normally drink squash but I've been drinking tons of it. I'm just rounding off all of the corners. I'll explain to you which corners I've rounded off. Right, so the corners, just in case I went out of shot there, the corners I've rounded off is on this piece of cardstock. I've just cut in on the one inch, I've just notched in the sides, and then I've just rounded off these two corners on the front. I haven't done anything with a big piece and I haven't done anything with the concertina pieces. And with these, I've just rounded off on all four corners. And with my DSP, I've rounded off on all four corners of the strips and I've just rounded off on this strip that goes on the front flap, I've just rounded off those two corners, okay? Right, so now we can get on to assembling. What I'm going to do first is attach these two pieces together. Now it doesn't really matter which is your front and back. But what you do want to do is you want your top of one of these pieces to line up exactly with that score line there. Okay, and you're going to glue that onto there for the lid. Okay, so if you get your glue, whichever glue you're going to use, I'm going to use Tombow. And pop your glue all over, all over that flap there, that one inch flap. Well, I think I've gone a bit too overboard on my glue. No wonder I've got it left. Mind you, I placed an order and it's coming really soon. I'm the fastest an order has ever come for me. I'm usually the unluckiest person in the world. And every time I place an order, there's a bank holiday or something. I normally end up waiting about three weeks for my order to come. But I ordered on, I think it was Tuesday, and it's coming tomorrow. And I placed another order today, a small one. It's a little bit, I have noticed my um, demo discount sort of disappeared though. I didn't really get, don't seem to get a lot nowadays. 
Right, so before I do anything else, I've got glue all over the back, which shouldn't be there, but before I do anything else, I'm just going to stick my DSP up. Now, think about directions, because this is your front, this is your back, so you want your, um, if there is a direction to your DSP, you want it going that way and this way, okay? Uh, I put way too much glue on that um, piece of cardstock. Let's make that mistake again. So pop. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I like to see that little bit extra bit of space around the edge there. Whenever I'm making Christmas projects, I always get Christmas songs in mind. I've got Ding Dong Merrily on High today. I won't start singing it for you, but that's what I've got on my head. And that piece goes there. Okay. This is a great project to make with your kids or grandkids. Because there's lots of gluing and sticking to be done and there's nothing better is there than gluing and sticking when you're a kid then that piece needs to go on the top there so try and follow through your theme from the front so we've got our bells going upwards so I'm going to have I don't think it really matters to be honest with this paper And then this goes onto there. Okay, so simple. There's just lots of cutting out to start with, but then it gets easier. And it seemed a bit more of a faff because I've been going on about two different sizes. So. And by the way, for the four and a half one, you make it exactly the same as I've just made this one. So there you can see your box is taking shape. And then we'll pop the concertina sides. We won't pop the concertina sides in. What we're going to do now is stick our DSP onto our straps. And then when they're a little bit drier, I will um, reinforce those uh, score lines in terms of not reinforcing and make them stronger. I mean, well, I suppose technically that's what you're doing. But what I'll do is I'll just burnish them again with the DSP in place. I'm use my bone folder to really press those down. I mean, this will, like I said, I made the mistake of making it before instead of four and a half. You can see how much um, stuff would have been wasted if I had just abandoned it. But because it's four by seven, then it's going to perfectly hold um, side by side sets of three by threes. And I make lots of three by threes at Christmas. I know a lot of people love the three by threes. Try and get those on straight, not like me. Okay. 
sometimes Tombow will slide, sometimes it won't, it depends how much you put on. And sometimes you don't put a lot on because you don't want it to slide. I'm just going to reinforce those little score lines by going over them again. Right, so then these will fasten onto the box. So here's the top. This is the lid of the box, this piece here. So these longer pieces are going to come... I thought I'd made a mistake then. These longer pieces are going to go on like so. Now, the reason I'm doing it with the two straps instead of the one strap that I had here is because to fasten on these, um, these I needed to use my cropper dial and not everybody's got a cropper dial so I thought I'm going to do it so that you don't have to buy a cropper dial as well as the um, other tool. So that's what's going to happen. They're going to go on there and then the box is going to come up like so hold one on and that's going to come from the bottom and they're going to overlap and that's where they're going to press stud together okay so let's glue these on then so you don't need to glue this but you can glue all the other bits so don't glue your last inch but do put plenty of glue on the rest And then what I do is I line it up on my grid paper or against a ruler and I just pop, line up that score line there at the bottom and just line it up with this one on the left hand side, line it up, get it nice and straight, oh, goodness me. And then line it up with a one inch mark there on the left side and then just pop it down try and pop it down straight <laughs> it probably is straight it probably just looks weird because my DSP is not straight and then do the same on the other side so remember you glue your tab that's next to your three inch piece but you don't glue the tab that's next to the two inch piece and then again line it up nicely Everything's sticking to me. And then line the left side up with the six inch mark. Line everything up. And press everything down. Okay, and that's your top. And now your bottom, you do the same. Your bottom, you're going to come up. like so okay so so that when it's closed you might need to just reinforce that again sorry Let's just reinforce that again and that again. Let's add in that extra cardstock. Makes it nice and strong. So they're going to come up like so, okay? So you don't want any glue on your end tab again. So you want glue on your long piece. and the middle tab, the middle section, but not on the end tab. Okay. So 
So with this one then, to line it up properly, get it nice and straight again. Find your one inch line. And have it nicely lined up there. If you're not confident in getting it straight, and most of us wouldn't be, I would normally measure it to be honest. Um, do measure an inch in from the side. Give that a good press in. And then you might want to just pop that one back just so that it's not in danger of getting in the way. And then again, bring it in so you're at your six inch line. Press that down, press that tab down. Press that tab back if you just want to make sure that it's not going to stick down accidentally. And then we'll just reinforce these with a press down. And then just make sure that's nice and flexible. Right, so okay. there's our box. So now I'm just going to add the concertina sections and then we're going to add the poppers. So your concertinas, you want them to be going, your lines to be going up and down like so, and they're going to fit into these sections here. But you're going to glue them between your second score line from the left and the third score line from the left, or your second score line from the right. So up the back of the box. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pop glue, and you can use tape or whatever you want to use, up the side there. And up the side there and then what I do is I make sure I've got my outie if you like and it's quite dark so I can't see but you just make sure that you book that up right on the edge of your your cardstock there between those two score lines and then you do exactly the same with your other side. Now, when I say make sure you've got an outie, this is what I call an outie, this is an innie. Now, if I stuck it in like that, my first thing would be sort of a gap. So I like to keep, just personal preference, I just think it looks neater if it's the other way around. You can make them slightly smaller if you want in your space. So you can make them a sixteenth of an inch smaller. I just really didn't want to faff about with the measurements too much. You can put a bit of glue along here and that will stick to it eventually. But that's not your aim. Your aim is to stick it to here. Okay. So put some glue along there and then what you'll do is you'll fold it over and pull your concertina up to meet or pull it down to meet that side and once you've got it where you want it give it a little press and then give it a good old pressing down with your bone folder. And once you've done one side, the other side will be easier. I shouldn't have said that, should I? Because it probably won't be now. Oh gosh, my dog's just farted, I think. Give that a good pressing down with your bone folder. I mean, it might work best if this if they're at six, to be honest, because you're not getting much of a of a 
concertina going on to be honest if you're not just gonna grab the card and see what we're like for oh they do fit they fit you wouldn't you wouldn't get the tabs in but you definitely get the cards in Let's see if you get an envelope in I don't want to overwhelm it with cards. Oh, that's my, that's my, where's the envelope? There's an envelope. No, you won't get the envelopes in, but you get the cards in. So, hmm, and you wouldn't get a, a divider in, but you get the cards in. Right, so now we're going to do the poppers because that's what's going to hold it together. And we're going to have our poppers come in down. Should we have them going up or coming down? Should I either have them... No, I'm going to have them going down like this. Right, so I'm just going to have a quick drink. Right, now this poppy tool, or popper, I bought it, I'll put a link to it. I've got really sticky fingers. Um, but I'll put a link to the popper tool. I got it off eBay, I think. And I got it with all these different... No, I got it off Amazon. With all these different coloured poppers. And you get a different sort of shaft mechanism. And you get three different little cups here. So you can do bigger or smaller press studs. Um, and that you get a little screwdriver so you can take this to pieces and put your change your bottoms it's really easy to do and you get a little um, pokey tool to make the holes I forgot what you call them <laughs> I can't remember what you call it anyway what you need is you have these caps um, and you need four caps and then you have like a male and a female section so the male has like the piece you push in and that's the receptor so you need obviously you need a male and a female and two caps for each piece okay so what you do is you'd line up your male and feet you know where you're going to put your cap just line it up and you can measure it or whatever and but just stick your pokey tool is it an awl that's what you call it isn't it stick that through the two sections and give it a little wiggle and then do the same with your other section I'm just sort of going for the center of that tab try not to make a hole in the box behind it Okay, and then what you do is on the, the back you'd get your cap and you, they've got a little point, you stick the point through the hole using white ones. So you stick your point through the hole and then you'd have your receptor there which is your female if you like. And then what you do is you'd get your cap into your little black recess here and then once it's into that recess you just squeeze down and it's quite easy to do and there you have it it's fixed and then in your other side obviously your popper will go on the outside and you're going to have your male version so you stick that on that side and they will hold together a little bit and then you get that little cap in the recess and you press down and now when they come together that will pop together it's a press stud and it will pop together and you will be able to get it out again so I'm going to do the other side so I might zoom in a little bit but the trouble is when I zoom in I always go out a shot so I'm going to pop the press stud at the back and the, these work on fabric as well obviously they're for fabric 
the prestood through the back and the female receptor section there. Then I get my little black guide in the right place and squeeze. If you don't get if you don't get that comfortably into your little black rubber thing, it won't work. So once you've got it on a little bit, give it another little go. Okay. And it might just squish your cardstock again, but just push it back. And then I'm going to show you again. So put your cap, oops, put your cap into the hole. And then put your male part on. Press it. Press it down a little bit. And then get your cap comfortably into the little black cup. And press. And like I say, it might just squidge your paper a little bit. If you go from the side, it's not so bad. And then what you can do is you can fasten them down. And it just gives you a cute way of fastening your box without using magnets, without using look how comfortable that is. Without using magnets, without using um, Velcro dots or whatever. You do have to get them lined up really well. I mean, you might want to. What you could do is... Oh, I've got that dirty. What you could do is you could actually join your two pieces together with, with the press studs and then attach them to the box so that you know you've got them definitely matched up really nicely. And then to undo them, you obviously just pull them apart. And I will link this little gadget below. There's probably more expensive ones, but that works perfectly fine. And I've used it on fabric as well. So now my little box is taking shape. I would I would go back to the six six inch panel. I think it just makes a difference um, that's worth having. So I'd definitely go back to the six. That was just a trial. So for my sentiment then, I'm just going to, I did have some, yeah, I was say I did have some dimensionals out. Some people will whack thousands of dimensionals on the back of something um, to make you buy more, to make you think you need more than you do. But you really don't need tons of them. You get a nice lift and it's a uniform lift just from a couple. Um, and then that can just be stuck on the front there. I'm going to just stick it on with some dimensionals. Again, I'm only going to use a couple because that's all you need. I'm just going to pop mine on there. Goes across the two, and then I'm just going to thread my ribbon through between the dimensionals. This is another reason why I don't like to use tons of dimensionals because if you did, you couldn't do things like this because you wouldn't have to get your ribbon through. And then I'm just going to tie that in a bow. This is lovely ribbon. It was there was this, and I think it was Emerald Envy, I think. Um, green in a double pack, and I think I got I got loads of them. I think they were like one pound ninety or something for the two. And it was really cheap um, on the clearance rack, but. I don't know what's happened to clearance rack just lately because it just seems to have stopped updating. It just it used to update quite regularly and it just it hasn't updated. I don't in fact I don't think it's updated since not a good update since um celebration to be honest. Even the um new catalogue when it updated though it was it was rubbish, didn't really have much on it. So 
I'm not saying the products were rubbish or the fact that it, we have a clearance track is rubbish but the there wasn't much on it so you see the clearance rack is really good to get products to try at a lower price and also it's a great place for demos to pick up gifts and stuff for people so it's a shame that it's not there are some bits and bobs in fact I've just done an order from the clearance rack to show to demonstrate um, how cheap things are on there and how anyway so there we go that's the little box and it's so cute and I hope you like it I don't think it's as striking as this one um, just because this one's black and white and shocking pink and it, I love it and this one's a bit more looks a bit more serviceable and less fancy but um, yeah there we go have fun making those and I'd love to see what you do with it and if you get on with your popper your little popper maker um so if you do use them tag me in um your makes hashtag craft little things uk and if you put them on instagram and i'll see them and then i'll be able to give you a like and a follow you see what i mean about this the six inch ones they just seem to i don't know if it's because the cards pushing them out just seem a little bit too big Maybe the compromise is the halfway, it's five and a half, but I don't know. That little quarter of an inch just gives you that extra to get those um, envelopes in. So, But that, that would be great for three by threes because you'd be able to, um, you'd be able to pop like two lots or three by threes and cards, especially if you put dividers in be able to put the cards and the envelopes side by side or you could just use it for cards and keep your envelopes somewhere else or you could have one with cards and one with envelopes in the choice is yours thanks Jeremy, I've had real fun making these projects and I hope that you have a little bit of inspiration even if it's to just use the poppers in a different way it's just something different um, a lot of people have said they've not seen poppers used in paper craft before so I'm quite happy. I'm sure somebody's used poppers in paper craft before. I mean, that'd be ridiculous. I think nobody's ever done it. But um, I'm quite happy that people are seeing it for the first time and coming up with some ideas. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.